Hi, my name is Josephine and these are my creatures. Welcome to the final episode of Rainbow Repaint series. I'm so excited to wrap this series up because that means I am free to focus on the next one. My Celestial Goddess slash Planet series. I'm still working on the name, so comment down below if you have any good name suggestions for the new series. But today's theme is orange. I love orange. It's one of my favorite colors. But I only had a handful of materials in this color. Except the many different shades of pastels in orange. The challenge behind the Rainbow Repaint series is that I am only allowed to use one color, so the dolls need to be monochromatic. I can use white and black if I feel like I really need it. Choosing the base for this repaint was quite easy. It had to be Toralei. She has the perfect skin tone and I have never repainted her before, so I was quite excited to get to work. First I remove her factory face up with pure acetone and some cotton rounds. I also very gently rub off her stripes. I will be sanding the body later, so if the plastic melts a little bit because of the acetone, it isn't a huge deal. Just use a very small amount. You want a cotton pad to be almost dry. We have a very strict color palette and her green stripe is not going to fit the picture. So off it comes. Later off camera I remove the remaining stubble with tweezers. I gave her a really nice long bath because this time I want to keep her hair. I like the color and it was in good enough of a condition. The hair looks very red on camera, but in person it is much more orange. To replace the green stripe I will be adding some new hair. I used Tangerine Sorbet and Seville from Retro Dolls EU. Their shop is closed now, I'm just using up my stash. I add the new colors throughout her hair and part line. To secure the new hair, I pour some glue into the neck hole. I give the hair an initial whack to make it easier to manage. I protect her hair with a cloth and spray the first layer of Mr. Super Clear Matte Sealant. I start off by using my plethora of pastels to shade and highlight the face. These stick pastels are a poorer quality than my pan pastels, so they do take up multiple layers before the color starts to pop. I use a medium toned orange pencil to sketch out the shape of the eyes. I thought it was fun to do more of a rounded outer corner than to go full on feline. I have repainted this mold three times before, but each time I was working with a different skin tone. I used darker, more terracotta orange for the lips and pupils. I use white to start building the eye whites and I'm also adding the highlights around the eyes, nose and lips. Then it is time to apply a new coat of sealant. I want her to emit those cozy fall vibes, so a soft expression is the way to go. I really like experimenting with the brows. Sometimes I like a really bushy brow, and sometimes I go with something a bit sleeker. It just depends on my mood and the character I'm making. I go over the white areas again to build up the color. I also go over the lines of the eyes and pupil to build the color. Face-ups are all about layers. 
I switch over to a brush because I'm impatient and I want the color to be more vibrant right away. The eye whites really need building up, so I use some acrylic paint to do that. I seal my work once I'm happy with it. I add freckles to her skin with different pencils. I also add tiny teeth for her. I really love giving my dolls teeth. I really like the challenge of painting them and they are just the coolest looking little detail you can add. They make her look a little spooky but I love it because it's so close to Halloween. The purple doll in the series was also released around Halloween. So it was about time to get this series to an end. But if you do have some wishes for repaints done in this style, like I've seen comments asking for a black and white doll or a grayscale, do leave those down below in the comment section. And maybe I will continue this series later down the line. Sometimes I use a pencil and sometimes a brush for the lashes. It just varies because I like both of them. Doing them with a pencil is a little bit easier, but sometimes you can get a nicer look with a brush. Her eyes were lacking a little bit, so I added some lines to detail them more. I really like the look of these lines on other people's work, but I'm still not sure how I like them on my own dolls. To add a little bit more to her eyes, I decided that copper technically is a shiny orange. A Q-tip is very handy when applying the powder to the eyes. It has more control than a brush would have. I add three dots of white paint to act as an artificial catch light. I sprayed it all the final time to lock everything in. I free her from her head wrap and apply gloss to her eyes and teeth. After regretting glossing my sun goddess's lips, I have left the lips matte on two of my recent face-ups. I really wanted to use my only orange paint somehow on this doll. So after her face was done, I was crazy enough to go all out and add some stripes with it. I decided to really embrace the cat features of this doll and make them part of my design. I really was struggling with what to do with her body, but ended up finding this orange knit fabric from my fabric closet. And I think it would make for a really cute and super cozy jumper for her. I do want to keep the dolls in this series very minimal and just focus on the color and their face ups. So the outfit is super simple, just a long jumper slash dress. I don't know even what to call this. This time I didn't make a pattern for it, but just after hemming the piece, sewed it directly on the doll. Mm -hmm. 
I cut slits to where the arms are and also shorten the top about where the shoulder seams needed to be. I closed the shoulder seams. I wanted the sleeves to be a little vintage inspired, so I cut two pieces for them. The flared one will be the top and once gathered down will create a small puff around the cuff piece. To make the cuffs stand out more, I flipped the fabric so that the darker backside is on the outside. I also quickly made a tube of fabric that's going to be the turtleneck of this dress. First I thought to make the dress not removable, but later on I seam ripped the top just enough to be able to pull the dress over the doll's hips. Here is the added closure at the back. One snap button was added to the turtleneck to keep it in line. After the clothes, I started working on her body. I always remove or completely cover the molded on underwear. And an X-Acto knife is great for removing the bulk. And then sandpaper or a sanding sponge like I am using is convenient for finishing the job. I prime the body with MSC matte sealant and use my pastels to blush the body. I also add the stripes to her body as well. I'm not that great of a painter and I was freehanding all the stripes, so they are a little crooked at places. It's time to rejoin her body and head. The finishing touches consist of trimming and styling her hair. And at the last minute, I made this tiny pumpkin necklace for her. To really make those fall vibes come through. I had a hard time figuring out what I wanted the theme for this doll to be, but in the end I decided to just go with the flow and see what comes out, and I really like the autumnal cat character I ended up with. What do you guys think of her? If you are wondering, where is all the group pictures of all of the dolls? I'm planning on making a recap video about the whole series. So, to see the complete rainbow of dolls, subscribe to not miss that when it comes out. I do hope I have enough time to get it done before the end of the year. Thank you guys so much for watching, subscribe if you haven't yet done that, like this video and leave a comment, I would love to know what you think of my orange cat girl. Speaking of cats, here is our three months old kitten. His name is Monni, and isn't he the cutest little kitty? You can follow me on Instagram to see more pictures of him. Until next time, bye!